What's up Tweenerheads? Welcome back to another video today here on Tweenerhead Tennis. I'm your original Tweenerhead, Phil, and welcome to another video on our channel. This is where we talk about tennis in a more casual way for you guys to understand what is going on on and off the court. If you are new to the channel, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. We are almost at 700 subscribers at the, by the end of the year, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to join our journey in the tennis world. Today, we are going to be talking about the Andy Murray documentary called Resurfacing, and it's an Amazon original. It just came out just a couple weeks ago, and it has to be one of my favorite documentaries of all time in sports, just because it's not about a player that's retired or someone who passed away. It's about a guy who's still on tour and a guy who's still fighting to get back to where he once was in a professional sport. And you don't see that in today's world. At least you have an HBO series called Hard Knocks where they go through uh, NFL teams where they get different perspectives, but this is solely just about one player and one person that you have to focus on. So that I love the perspective of it. So let's just get right into it and talk about Andy Murray resurfacing. Right off the bat, I just want to say that this video was very well made and the director actually, I just found out according to tennisworld.com that Andy Murray didn't have a say in the final cut and the final say of the documentary, which in my mind and from a person who does YouTube or <laughs> who does make video and has someone else in the content, they always make sure that it's okay with them. But this was kind of interesting just to see she didn't, I guess, want him to leave anything out because it's very raw footage. It's very raw footage and raw emotion that you see from him and the recordings that he did on his own phone just to get the sense of what was actually happening and allow us to be in that inside, be a part of his team and his family on a day-to-day -day basis when he was going through this injury. And this injury started back in 2017 when he lost to Query at Wimbledon in 2017 and that was kind of the spiral downwards in his injury. It was his spiral downwards into his injury proneness, I would say, that led to this documentary. And what's cool about this is you get a perspective from every person on his team. And you get a perspective of what it's actually like to, it's cool to get to know them on a more personal basis because you don't get that from teams. You don't, no one really, tries to interview the other people on a person's team. They try to focus on the head coach and the player and their relationship and see how it builds to their success. They don't focus on the physio, their PT, their people that have been around their team for over 10 years. And he's had physios and coaches that he's known since junior days. And to have that around you is insane. I was listening to the documentary and I was watching it and I was kind of thinking, Wow, these people have known him better and probably know him better than his wife, I would say sometimes, because they've been with him longer. They get their perspective and then they get Kim's perspective, his wife's perspective, and she played a big role in understanding what was going on with him in his home life. And I thought that was an interesting one because Kim understands what it's now like to be on tour herself, just because she's been married, she's married to Andy and she, has kids with Andy and she's traveled with him to understand what goes on in the tennis world and she kind of understand and she definitely understands what is going on in his mind and I thought that was a really cool perspective to see just the way she was describing everything and what was going on in his mind I think that's the real thing that they provided in this documentary was the insight into other people's perspectives and the media that was berating him with a lot of newspaper articles and a lot of just bad media attention. I think one of the things that we had to take away from this is the amount of criticism and the amount of pressure he was putting on himself because one thing I took away from the documentary was how much the media becomes an expert on being a doctor or all of a sudden the media becomes coaches and tries to analyze everything that Andy was doing, especially when his return to Queens in 2018, when he first made his comeback. It really 
showed you what kind of pressure he was under and what and what he was going through each day to get better especially in 2018 last year because after the DC adventures after the grueling three-hour matches back to back the personal memos he was making of himself and him recording this because that takes a lot of guts to put emotion on the line like that and you could really see what he was doing and really understand how he was feeling after you saw what he was talking about when he was doing his video recordings on his iPhone. And that definitely gives you a new perspective into the tennis world because not many people can open up like that and Andy is a very emotional guy. You see that on the court and you see the passion he has for the sport. So for that, for him to go through something like that is something unbelievably difficult and very open and honest when it comes to revealing the stresses and more human side of the sport instead of just being on the court. And it's crazy because you don't really see that. You see that nowadays when, with what I'm trying to do and talk to players more about what they're like off court and what Behind the Racket is doing and all these other podcasts are doing and trying to unveil the opportunities and the real human aspect of the game. And I think this documentary really did a good job with that. They did, they showed his doctors, they showed his family, they showed his mom, his brother, his wife, his, literally a microscope. They put a microscope to his life just to see what he was going through. And that's something that you cannot be comfortable with, especially if it's gonna be publicized on such a big level. Point out some of the things that the documentary was very keen on and that, and I mentioned it before, the memos that he would make himself. Video recordings he would do after DC, the audio recordings he did for when he explained the history and I think the history of the massacre that he was unfortunately and thankfully survived and his parents getting a divorce at such a young age and him strong and powerful when it came to understanding what he was going through. And you never really understood what he was going through because I feel like when he explained what was going on within the year that he was a part of an unbelievable tragic event, the massacre that he fortunately survived and his parents getting a divorce the next year, tennis was a way for him to escape. And tennis was a way for him to get all these feelings and all this bottled up anxiety out and kind of gives other people a chance to express themselves. And this was the way Andy expressed himself. And I couldn't think of a better way for him to do that. And you can hear the emotion in his voice when they were doing the voice memo and voice to text on the screen for you. So I thought that was a great way that they did that and a very powerful and strong way for to capture the audience's emotions, which it definitely did for me. There are three side notes, I would say, that I are interesting about the documentary itself. We could have gone without seeing the actual hip surgery and the amount of blood and hammering that was going into the hip when Andy was watching <laughs> the f***ing surgery on the screen. He was, and you could see inside a person's leg and there was no warning, no context, just here's surgery, here's the f***ing leg. Holy crap, this is disgusting. So thank you for that, I really appreciate that. I didn't know I had to mentally prepare for that. So thank you Amazon for that. And thank you Andy for showing that. It was the first time I ever saw Andy Murray's father. It was the first time ever I've seen Andy Murray's father. And they saved that for the very, not the very end, but towards the end of the documentary, they showed Andy's father. I don't know, I've just never seen him. So I thought that was very interesting. And then the third is when Murray was practicing at the Australian Open this past year before he announced he was uh, getting off, well, before he was pulling out of the tournament, he has his coaches and him sitting down after practice and they're talking about the amount of matches he's had on one specific court or the one he was playing on against who, who they were playing, what the score was. And it's very impressive 
to see that kind of mind remember every specific detail or who they played or when, what year, the score, like they remember everything when they've been together for so long. And I thought that was an incredible thing to do as well. So that was very interesting to say the least. Wrapping up this review in a review in a sense, it's one of those things where you don't have to be a tennis fan. You don't have to be a sports fan. You can just feel and understand the emotion and presence that this video means to Andy when he was making this. And from when he was waiting for someone to tell him he needs to retire at the Australian Open. When Kim said, no one can tell you to stop but you. And his decision process of after the hip surgery is like, oh, I want to come back. I want to do more. I want to push through. You don't have to be a fan of anything in particular. It's a well-made film and it's a big, and you really understand what's going on. And Andy Murray is one of those guys who is a fighter from day one and will never give up. Will never give up. So I really hope that you guys do watch this because this is one of the, this is definitely a film to see and a documentary, a sports documentary for that matter that everyone needs to see. And I certainly enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. If you guys did watch the movie, leave a comment down below what your favorite part was. If you haven't watched the movie, Go watch it. That's gonna do it for today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this review of Andy's documentary on Amazon. Andy Resurfacing is the title. If you wanna check us out on all our social medias, all the links are down in the description below for more behind the scenes content that we're doing. If you wanna check out our latest video that we just did, we just did a video about Tennis Canada in the golden year that they just had. So make sure to check that out. Link is in the description below, as well as our website at tennis.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope to see you guys soon. Thanks, guys.